Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. We've got a fun project today. We're going to be adding some chair rail and some wainscoting to the walls in my dining room. I've been working on this room for a few days, giving it a refresh, adding a bunch of Mitri moldings. As you can see, I've already done new baseboard, new crown molding along the top. But today is going to be all about chair rail, wainscoting. We're going to give this room a really nice look. Super easy to do. So we're going to walk through it step by step. Let's get started. All right, first things first, let's have a look at the pieces that we're going to be using for this project. These are both from the Mitri Option M line. We have the chair rail here. This is a really nice profile. It's two and a half inches deep, so it's going to look really nice on the wall. And then for the wainscoting, we're just using a very pretty simple panel mold. We're going to be doing wainscoting boxes across the wall. And uh, I think it's going to look really good. But let's get to it. First things first, let's install the chair rail on the wall. All right, before we get started, just a quick note on some of the tools you're going to need when you're taking on this kind of a project. Number one is a brad nailer. Of course, you're going to need that if you don't want to glue stuff to your walls, which I typically try to avoid. I don't like gluing anything to my walls because I ever want to make changes. It's a lot easier to pull out some brad nails and fill those holes than it is to rip glue stuff off your walls and have to patch up drywall and you know what I mean. Other than that, your basics, tape measure, pencil. Now, to keep a nice straight line, I'm using a laser level. If you don't have a laser level, no big deal. Grab your tape measure, a pencil, mark out your wall. Works just as well. This is just a little bit faster. So let's get started. I'm starting with the longest wall in the room. This is 22 feet exactly. I'm using a 12 foot length of chair rail, which is great because I'm only gonna have one joint on the wall. I'll make a scarf joint to try to join that as nice and cleanly as I can. The ends will just be butted right to the end of the wall because the piece that comes to join it will be coped and it'll be a nice clean joint at the ends. So let's go cut this thing. One quick note, this hutch weighs about 3,000 pounds. There's no way I'm getting it out of the room. I got all the other furniture out of here before I started. This thing's just gonna have to be kind of moved around like a Tetris piece as I go along the walls. It's really heavy. Don't tell my wife that I put this piece of chair rail on it. But let's go, let's get it cut and put the, put the first piece in. All right, so we're ready to go with our first piece. Like I said, the one end is going to butt right against the wall. The other end is a scarf joint. And what we're gonna wanna do is just line this up, right? So that the top is right in line with our laser line or with your pencil marks, whatever you decided to, to use to mark your wall and uh, just nail it on in. So let me get my nailer. And we'll do that. All right, we're ready to go here. One thing before I nail in this first piece, just a quick note, you might be asking, hey Dom, you never mentioned how you decide how high up the wall to put your chair rail. Good question. Here's what you do. Typically, the rule of thumb is you wanna be one third the height of your wall. My wall is nine foot tall, so easy calculation. I want the top of my chair rail to be at the 36 inch mark. It's as simple as that. So let's nail this first piece in and get going around the wall because we got a lot to do. So far so good.
Okay, so we've got this wall done. We're gonna be getting to that back wall pretty soon. But before we do that, we just need to finish off this little corner here. Can't see real well because of the light coming in from the window, but we've got this little piece here between the wall and the window. So we're just gonna cope a little piece, fit it in there and uh, that'll be done and we can move on to the other wall. So let's do that real quick and get this chair rail done so we can move on to the wainscoting. Okay, on to the back wall. Let's get this piece in. First of all though, I need to move this monster out of the way so that my laser line can hit this back wall. So let's move this and get going. You know what, that's good enough. We can just move the laser. Ooh, look at that, that fits perfectly. All right. Perfect. I'm going to move on to that last wall. I don't need to bring you along for that. I'll do it real quick so we can get on to the wainscoting. That's going to be fun, I think. It's a lot of measurements. All right, we're ready to go on the wainscoting. I've already got the pieces for my first box cut and ready to go. But before we get started, just a couple of quick notes when it comes to wainscoting. Uh, number one, when it comes to figuring out your dimensions and your measurements, and spacing for your wainscoting boxes. It's not that difficult. There is some math involved. You can figure it out on your own, but these days with the internet, it's that much easier. Go into your search engine, type in wainscoting calculator, and you're gonna get a number of options. They're all good. They all help you out. All you need to do is figure out your measurements, type them all in, and it'll tell you exactly what cuts you need to make and how many you need to make to get the right number of boxes. Now, in my case, I wanted to make even spacing both above and below and to the left and right of each box. So the way it worked out on this wall, and you can see by my uh, laser line here that I'm going five inches from the top and five inches from the bottom, as well as five inches to the left and five inches to the right of each box. So based on those uh, measurements, and the height of my baseboard and my chair rail, I was able to get the exact dimensions of all the pieces I needed to cut. Now, a couple of other things. In terms of putting up the wainscoting, I'm not going to be using just the brad nailer in this case. And here's why. When it comes to baseboard or chair rail or crown molding, it's very easy to run across and get your studs in the wall and the nail into a stud is good enough to hold that thing in place uh, for a long, long time. But because the chair rail is spaced out and the boxes are going to be in different places, you're not always necessarily going to be able to get a stud. Now the chair rail is very light material. It's not the end of the world, but just to give a little extra security, I do use just a couple little dabs of construction adhesive on each piece before I nail it in just to give it that extra little hold uh, in case we're not getting a stud, which we're not gonna get a stud on, on probably most of them. All right, so for the wainscoting, I'm using this panel molding from Mitri. I actually have all of the products I've used here linked in this video in the caption, so go check that out if you want any specific information on any of the parts that I've used here. But here's a quick look at this panel molding and the profile of it. It's going to look really good up on the wall. And when it comes to wainscoting boxes, actually super, super simple. There's only one cut you need to make and that's a 45 degree angle so that your boxes meet up. 45 degree cuts on either side of every piece and you're good to go. So based on my requirements here for the wall and wanting to leave five inches of space all around each box, I ended up with needing two pieces at 32 inch and two pieces at 16 and three quarter inch. 
for this specific wall, it'll give me seven boxes at that size, all evenly spaced five inches apart all the way around. So let's get started getting this thing up there. Now, one quick note, as I put my construction adhesive on the first piece, and again, like I said, it's just a tiny little, couple tiny little dabs just to help secure the piece. You don't need a lot of it. The nails will do most of the hard work, but this will help in case you have anybody trying to rip panel molding off of your wall. I don't know why anyone would want to do that, but you never know. So now I've got my laser line marking my top half. What I've done to make my life easier is I took a leftover scrap piece of my baseboard. You can use really anything you have. And I cut this to exactly five inches wide. So I can now use this together with my up and down piece. I don't think that's what the technical term is for it, but I'm going to call it an up and down piece. And I can get that on there and leave proper spacing so that I can get the right spacing for my top piece. Just get that on there right at the laser line. Once we're happy with how we have that sitting, we can let go of this. And get our nails in. get the rest of this wall done. That's it, a little bit of caulking to get those nice crisp lines on our boxes, get all the furniture back in here, put everything back in place, including that monster of a hutch, and we're done. That's how easy chair rail is, that's how easy wainscoting is. I'm no expert, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. It's a very DIY friendly project that's gonna add a ton of character to your spaces. If you want to know more about these great Matri products, check it out in my caption. I've got them all listed, exactly what I used in here, including the baseboard and the crown molding. So check those out. If you have any questions, leave me a question in the comment. I'll do my best to answer it. And that's it. Until next time, I'll see you.